The next form of uh, injuries are the urethral injuries, where the sign, the first symptom, what they show is neatal bleeding. And we try to put a catheter, the catheter does not go. So, what do we do at that time? It can be a small contusion in the urethra, it can be a partial rupture, or it can be a complete disruption. So, the first thing is to never put the catheter blindly. Yes, gentle one attempt of catheter can be done in the emergency OR if the clinician is experienced in that. Otherwise, call for help. The first thing what we do generally in emergency setting where the patient is not ready, we will do a gentle attempt and see at what level the catheter is not passing. We might pass a small guide wire and see if the guide wire is coiling in the bladder and over the guide wire will pass a catheter. Number two, suppose if the patient is ready, we can take him for a cystoscopy and pass a catheter. And if all these three things fail, then we will just decompress the bladder by putting a suprapubic catheter. Wait for about two weeks just to see that how much of the urethra is healed and then take the patient for a retrograde urethrogram, see where the problem is. If it is a stricture, then manage accordingly. Suppose if it was just a false passage, then we can again reinsert a catheter per urethrally and uh, maybe we can remove the catheter at about two to three weeks. Suppose if it, if it was just a hematoma at about two to, week, two to four weeks, even if we clamp the suprapubic catheter and ask the patient to void, sometimes most of, most of the patients will void. So, the key thing is never do a blind insertion of catheter or never do a multiple attempts. So, it is like do no, uh, do no harm for the patient in when it comes to urethral injuries because these injuries will not take his life but yes definitely that person will remember you for life. And that's it from my uh, topic and last topic is a penile fracture. These are uh, have included in this is in emergency because they come they do come in the late night or early in the morning when they realize this is happens when the engorged penis is bent suddenly forcefully. This uh, results in rupture of the both corpora cavernosa. And the treatment for this type of injury is generally exploration and repair unless if it is a very mild uh, injury. The diagnosis for this type of injury is by two things is one with uh, color duplex ultrasound. Suppose if that is not possible an MRI, pelvic, MRI of the penis will confirm its diagnosis. Treatment is by exploration, removal of the hematoma and closure of the tunica which is very important because if you do not treat it now they land up with Peyronie's disease or erectile dysfunction later on. Thank you. Regarding uh, investigation modality for renal or urethric calculi, you said uh, CT is the preference. Yes, sir. We know ultrasound is poor man CT. Should yes. we refer all the cases for CT or ultrasound? No, if you are, uh, one de one depends on what center you are. So, you, if you with a urethric colleague, you do an ultrasound, sometimes you do not find a stone. So, in that situation, we, we have two options. Stone might still be there, but it is not in seen in ultrasound or stone might be in the lower ureter which is missed. So, if there is any hydronephrosis, many times we see an ultrasound which has which shows only hydronephrosis, but no stone, then those patients definitely has to go and undergo a CT scan. So, regarding the persistent priapism uh, by using papaverin while doing uh, penile doppler and uh, using of this sildenafil, uh, is there any uh, long for what to do for long lasting priapism? See, generally priapism does not happen on its own. Suppose if patient has had his first dose of sildenafil, generally that type of erection stop uh, comes down by about 4 hours. Never they go beyond 4 hours. Sildenafil is not that a drug which will cause priapism. But yes, whenever we send patients for a penile doppler, some radiologists use uh, intracavernosal injection. So, that might trigger a priapism and if that is a cause, then yes, if it is more than 4 hours, we will have to relieve, relieve that uh, priapism with uh, evacuation, give multiple washes till the drug is washed out and then wait.
really with uh, one uh, one uh, bout of wash this will settle down for uh, structural repairs structure yes sir. Uh, urethral structural repairs sometimes they use buccal mucosa is it uh, okay sir or? yes yes made to plastic correct right? yeah you, it is called urethroplasty urethroplasty where we use, use uh, the buccal mucosa, mucosa. Ah. why we use buccal mucosa is because the quality and texture of that mucosa resembles more with the urethral mucosa how long it will last that depends on the patient but mm. generally as a uh, with lot of studies mm. the success rate of urethroplasty compared to a endoscopic viu in the reasonably long stand long segment structures is about 80 to 90 percent ah yes so definitely that gives a more durable solution compared to a viu which has a more recurrence rate it gives a recurrence rate of about 35 percent you do viu in 100 patients only 35 will not come back 65 will come back to you for a permanent solution just to push them from see see yes uh, endoscopically what we do for all protruding lesions in the bladder we excise like how we excise a polyp from the stomach we do a cystoscopy and excise by doing something called as turbt transurethral resection of the tumor and send it for biopsy that comes from the diagnosis papillomas are treated conservatively papillomas and low grade tccs transitional carcinomas are treated conservatively there is no role for any extensive surgeries only muscle invasive diseases of the bladder requires a major surgery superficial lesions are treated conservatively hydronephrosis of the kidney also generally the uh, the consensus is if the tumor has caused a hydronephrosis there are two situations one it is blocking the orifice of the vesicular ureter junction one or it is invading the wall of the ureter if it is invading the wall then it is a high grade tumor it is a muscle invasive so it requires a next modality of treatment in the form of hysterectomy if it is only invading then only the resection of the tumor is enough so only by doing that we'll get to know thank you dr shaikh i would like to call upon uh, dr harish kumar to hand over a moment to as a token of appreciation and gratitude to dr shaikh thank you all for you know coming out in big numbers and helping us in making this a grand success a big shout to all our uh, speakers uh, the dinner is big. thank you all so much and please you know i am on behalf of uh, the management of manipal uh, hospital millas road i am ex extending the season's uh, greetings i know it's 8 days in advance and christmas is on 25th so please accept our uh, season uh, seasonal greetings too so the dinner is being served on the right side of the conference hall thank, thank you, you so dr. much thank you dr bimya I request uh, Dr. Kiran Kanapuri sir to thank you for hosting our program. Huh?